Hello, everyone. Happy Monday and welcome to Telling Tales. Um, we run atmospheric, often creepy tabletop role playing games here on Twitch. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, the first thing that I need to do this evening is introduce our stream manager, Matt. Hello, Matt. Hello. Hi. Hi. Matt, you, you can't sound more atmospheric than me, Matt. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> I think we both have very creepy atmospheric voices, Johnny. Um, I think Northern English is, uh, you know, very... Uh, all right. Rural. You know, yeah. yeah. Very, very standoffish, creepy. some may say. Standoffish. Yeah. Some say friendly, uh, but they haven't met me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, we might see Matt more later when he gives us feedback from the comments on Twitch. If you would like to join in in the Twitch chats and comments, then Matt may post some of them here later. Um, but for now, toodaloo, Matt. No. <laughs> Good. Um, Right, uh, the first thing after that to go through is links. Um, Twitch, um, obviously, you are on now, unless you're watching this on YouTube later. Um, and that brings me to YouTube, which we also have. Um, we also have Discord, um, which we have multiple uh, tiers of based on the level that you are on our Patreon, which there is also a link to below. Um, there is a free tier to the Discord, so please do jump on there and come and have some chats with us. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's also all the standard social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. There we go. I'm a millennial. I know them all. Um, the next thing to go through is promo um, for our other shows here on Twitch slash YouTube, depending on when you're watching them. Um, so I messed these up last time, but I'm not going to this time. Monday is Call of Cthulhu. That's this. Tuesdays, Vampire, The Masquerade, 5th edition. Uh, Wednesdays, Simba Room, which is uh, from Free League. Um, although I believe... It may be time for Matt to jump back on, but I think that currently that is going to be on a short break and being temporarily replaced with something else until it comes back for the next story arc. Uh, what are we talking about, Simbrum? Yes. Uh, not right now. We're going to do another little short story arc, and then that's going to happen. Mm. There you are. Playing that's something going to happen. Definitely decided on and isn't still massively up in the air. Yeah, good. Um, and the first Saturday of every month is uh, one shot with uh, different systems, different GMs, different players. Um, and that is actually this coming Saturday, um, the 3rd of April, uh, where the group will be playing Morkborg. So that's exciting. Um, but for now, let's get back to this game. Um, so uh, this is session number three of this game. Um, so far, the group have been stranded due to um, inclement weather on the train and um, they have been transported by a helpful young man who didn't say very much um, in a horse and cart to the village of Durasdeer. Um during uh, the first night there, which they hoped would be their only night. Um, they were awoken by some bad dreams and uh, some scratching um at their doors um and um that brings us to our first player matt uh who is playing dane hi matt hey john um would you mind telling everybody a little about the uh investigation into the drawings on the doors sure yeah so um so everybody woke up and went outside to investigate what the scratching was on the door and were met with a very ornate um, cross symbol that was um, on both of the doors of the, the group who were traveling up, but not on any of the other doors um, where we were staying. Um, we, as a group, we took a photo of one of them and also drew a sketch um, for to kind of take forward. And then there was some dialogue with the, the owner of the pub to try and uh, figure out whether there was some way someone could have gotten in or, or not. And the door seemed to be to be barred and the uh, the entrance into the basement seemed to be locked and, and secure. So uh, we didn't really get to the bottom of exactly how somebody got in. Um, two, I think two of the group went outside to investigate, looking for kind of tracks or anything like that outside. 
but as the weather had been so poor, anything was likely to have been washed away and they didn't find any evidence. Um, so the mystery remained. Yeah. Um, and uh, so um, Dane stayed up all night um, with Willie, who uh, was the man who is also staying at the same pub, um, who is writing a book on the kind of dialect of the region. Um, and uh, morning rolled around um, and there were a, was a bit of a weird occurrence. Uh, so if Sam could come on, um, who's playing Jemima. Hello. Yeah, there was Hi, already Sam. a weird, weird occurrence in the night because uh, I think we were all rather disturbed by us all having had the same dream and then the weird mm. drawings on the door. So uh, I don't think many of us got much sleep. I was certainly very disturbed and quiet and writing in my journal all night, scribbling away. Uh, I uh, rushed off to the bathroom, racing Willy and succeeding to it. And then uh, <laughs> we all head downstairs and had our lovely breakfast. And it was quite nice. I think uh, Duncan's the tavern owner, isn't he? He's, he was yeah. trying to make it up to us and give us like a nice hearty breakfast. Um, it was rather good. Um, and uh, as it happened, there was a, a gramophone in the corner as well that we hadn't previously noticed. Um, and uh, so it was perfectly normal. It was playing nice music. It was all good. I, I can't remember what it was playing now. Um, not that it Just some that jazz. Just some jazz. That's it. Yeah. Um, but then kind of a weird thing happened. Um, it it kind of got strangely distorted, like the machine wasn't playing it properly and kind of like the, the timing of the, the music was incorrect, but in a very strange way that was quite unsettling. Um, and it kind of unsettled all of us. But when we asked the kind of everyone else in the, in the pub about it, no one else had any idea what was going on. So that was a bit weird. Um, and then I think it was um, Esther went over to investigate it um, to see what was going on with it. and. Uh, it just popped strangely at that very moment <laughs> and uh, everything went back to normal and it was a very strange feeling. And uh, I went outside and we all kind of didn't really know what to, to think, make of it and got to roll our good old sanity rolls <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. Um, having managed to avoid any sanity rolls in the first session, they were coming pretty <laughs> thick and fast in that one. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, so following this, um, the group or Esther especially, um, uh, slightly more so than anybody else, um, decided that um, finding the uh, vicar was quite important. Um, so uh, you all went to the church initially, didn't you? Hi, Sky. Hello. Managed to unplug my mic with my foot. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, your chase for the vicar. Yeah. So, uh, to begin with, um, Esther thought that she should go and uh, look in the church for the vicar. She's kind of determined to talk to him after the suspicious exchange that she heard uh, him having with the barkeep when they arrived. Um, basically along the lines of don't let them stay here. So we went to the church and there wasn't anybody in. It was sort of a lovely, sort of uh, recently done up uh, village church. Um, I think uh, I think Dane and Jemima had a look around. They didn't mm -hmm. find much, um, but they did... <laughs> <laughs> They did find, hello, they did find, um, sorry, my brain is completely gone. They did find a, a, a family who had an entire aisle there, I think. They were they were all buried there. Um, so it was a bit, you know, looking at that. Uh, well, he wasn't there, so we decided to go to his house. And um, at his, uh, well, when we got to his house, his door was wide open. Um I think it's January at this point, so it's a bit odd. Uh, we went inside and there was nobody there. There was a cooling cup of tea on the on the table, but nothing else. Um, at this point, Jemima was having a breakdown on a dry stone wall behind the house for about an hour and a half, while the rest of us looked for the vicar. <laughs> Probably um, the first of many. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I found some suspiciously good drawings in one of his journals. Um, yeah, and uh, we kind of gave up eventually and went back to the town square and sat down and waited for him. 
Yes, because you'd seen Duncan um, heading into a, a building just off the town square as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you went to uh, wait on the war memorial with the thought that you would see either Duncan and or potentially the vicar, um, which brings us nicely to uh, Jack, who is playing Melvin. Um, oh. Hi, Jack. Yes, so we were waiting uh, near Small War Memorial for Duncan, uh, uh, where we had a, a brief and wholesome conversation with Willie as he was leaving to go to the lake to speak with some fishermen down there to get some more research for his book. Uh, and we sort of realised it was about lunchtime uh, and we were all starting to get hungry. So Esther went into the inn uh, and came back with some jam sandwiches for us all. Uh, and then I sort of asked you was returning with these jam sandwiches. Duncan then arrived, uh, bearing the bad news that a local had died, uh, whose name was Donald Menzies, uh, and that our coach or cart driver, he was to be, uh, carrying the casket. And so he won't be able to take us to the train. Uh, and so we'd have to spend another night in this not creepy at all village. <laughs> There is definitely nothing creepy about the village. Just the normal <clears throat> village in Scotland. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, you have just received the bad news from Duncan that you may well have to spend another night here due to um, the passing of this villager. Um, Sam, could you make me an idea roll for Jemima, please? If it's that the Menzies are the same ones who were at the church, would I, you I, have would you have picked it up? Yes, Jemima uh, definitely yeah. remembered those names. That's fine. That's fine. She was, she was actually planning on mentioning it at a quiet moment soon. But great, that's yeah. absolutely fine with me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, Duncan, sort of, he's got quite a, a shocked face on. Um, as you've heard, the the people here tend to know each other reasonably well it's quite a small village um so you could imagine him probably being quite upset about it even though he's not a, a direct relation he, he may not even be a friend but with it being such a small community um you know he'll probably be quite affected by this this person's passing so he just kind of stands at having given you this news sort of looking down a little shocked for a moment I I think Jemima was thinking of kind of comforting him and then probably looks at one of the guys to go comfort him instead. <laughs> I'll kind of motion at J Dane or Melvin to be like. <laughs> I think Melvin might sort of just put a sort of pat on his shoulder sort of thing. Uh, like... <sighs> Thank you. Um, I have some things to attend to. And he what? walks off back towards the pub. I guess um, if, it, if it's before he walked off, I'll just ask, he, was he an old man? Um, aye, he's a, he's a grandfather, so... That is some comfort, I suppose, at least. Still a sad affair. Aye, um, you'll have to excuse me, he said and continues on back towards the pub. Mm -hmm. um, just as it, he's sort of almost out of earshot, he turns around and he says, uh, don't don't worry about if you've not got any money, the board for this evening, don't, don't concern yourselves with that. And then turns again. That wasn't the greatest of my worries. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like money, Mo. Well, Paying for the room isn't the uh, the worst thing that's come out of this, really. I don't suppose there's going to be much of an option to leave today now, is there? Um, I mean, from the sounds of it, it's, he's not offered any alternative way out. I suspect the whole village will be similarly... Uh... I'm wondering, did any of you guys um, see anywhere else we might be able to stay? I'm not sure how comfortable I am staying in the same place. 
I'm guessing there's nowhere else in the town, Johnny, right, at all. It's just the one tavern and then everything else is there's, basically there's houses. No, there's no other pubs um, that that have signs outside. Um, but, you know, you the, the village store is in what looks like a house. So you couldn't necessarily write off 100% that there isn't somewhere else that you could stay. But whether it's advertised as such to the casual viewer is um, is another thing. Hmm. The, the, I'll say to the group as well. The name Menzies, I, th I think, was that I, I saw the, the same name at the uh, the church. A whole family of them, in one of the aisles. Not particularly uh, remarkable, but clearly they've been in the village a long time. I suppose most people here probably have been. By the way, it, something that I was thinking Jemima might be thinking through at that point, is it conspicuous that the whole family was buried in the church in a row, whereas a lot of other people might have been outside? Would that make them an important family or something? Um, in some way, they're obviously set apart in that they are the only ones who have this burial aisle in the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you For some reason. Say, you couldn't say whether that might be, you know descendants of the founders of the village or they're mm. the ones with the most money and they've paid they've maybe paid for it or given a sizable donation to the church or something yeah, you, you're not sure on the exact reason um mm. but they are mm. conspicuous in that they are the ones who have that yes yeah 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 you might well say then uh, unlike any others it seems or any any certainly any other families they were all presumably in the church so important people <laughs> I presume so, yeah. Um, I don't really know what we do now. I suppose, do we just wait for tomorrow? Do we... Maybe most of the town folk probably won't be so receptive. Perhaps we could talk to Willie. He, maybe he has some... Oh, he's gone. He's gone up to the fishing. I mean... <laughs> we, we've got time. <laughs> we've got till tomorrow now. Well, it's either that or stay here and watch a funeral. So we have to stretch my legs. Just, just to get a picture of this, Johnny, like, yeah. obviously, I'm not pushing the, we should all just walk off, but how unreasonable is the walk from the cart journey We, we as we saw it at the from the way in? I know it was dark, but... Um, it, it would probably take you three or four hours on foot. Mm-hmm. And from what Duncan said, it's the amount of time that it would take you to get there would put you past the time for your train, yeah. for the, yeah. the London-Glasgow day train. That makes total um, sense. I think it's yeah. more of a case of Jemima getting the idea of if everything's screwed here, we could head off early tomorrow morning and be out sort of thing. I mean, that you could go to, you know, there's nothing to, to stop you getting a train to somewhere else. Yeah, um, okay. you, you could walk there and go get a train to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, th this train is specifically sort of a train to pick up the passengers that were left yesterday. Yeah, we've missed that one. That's yeah. The point. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Jemima's was like, well, I, we've missed our train. So the only reason I want to leave is because this place is rather unsettling, I guess now. <laughs> I must admit, I'm somewhat curious in a disturbed kind of way. Well, what with the funeral, I doubt I'll be talking to the priest anytime soon. <laughs> you can maybe track him down afterwards uh, at the, the wake. <laughs> I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate, Mr. Caffey. <laughs> Is is anyone else about now, Johnny, like in town or doing anything around us? Um, you can't currently see anybody out in the streets. Um, the, the church door is still open, you can see from where you are, which is how you left it. Um, and again, you can see little sort of flits of motion through building windows, house windows. Um, but there's not anybody out and about currently. 
Does does Jemima sort of remember much of the detail of the the Menzies um, crypt? Is it something where she might think it's worth going and having another look at in the light of the new I information? I mean, she was kind of thinking that as well, I think. But given the situation, I don't think it was like she's not like she didn't she doesn't remember much of it because she was just like oh that's interesting a whole family so she wasn't thinking about it at the time but now given the circumstances yeah so i mean imagine say uh danes maybe asked that and she just goes um i was thinking i could maybe have another look although i'm not sure i suppose no one's up there still given what's going on we could go have a look i mean we don't don't have a lot of else to do here do we it's either you know, try and get to the bottom of at least some of what's going on or walk to another village that probably doesn't have anywhere for us to stay. At least here we've got beds for the night, however unsettling it is. It seems like this was an important family for the villagers. I don't think it will do us any harm to maybe learn a bit more about them if there's anything we can find. At least some context, perhaps. Yeah, it sounds sensible. Let's go. Okay, um, you head back into the church and there's nobody in there still. Um, you head straight to the uh, the burial aisle. So Jemima obviously knows where it is. Um, so you have a number of um, sort of stones that are each engraved. Um, they all have... Uh, they follow a similar template um of uh sort of the the arms and then the the family name and then the actual individual person's name these you would guess from the the gaps between um sort of death dates and they're all male um, so you would you you could quite easily presume that they are all sort of the patriarch of the family at any given time that is that is passing. There don't seem to be any um, children in here, and like I said, no women. So um, whilst you don't have a full sort of family history thing, you could presume that 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 it's always the the oldest man at any given time that has that has died. Um, the oldest one that you can see is, um, and I say that you can see because there are there were ones that extend past them, but they're so faded that you can't pick out um, that much information from them, um, is from 1607. Uh, and that's William Menzies. How many are there past that that we can see out just out of curiosity? There are 14. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> really, uh, they've been in this village a long time. I mean, this is actually, I didn't even think the village would be that old. <laughs> There's, uh, we don't notice anything weird about like the ages or anything on them. Like they didn't all die at like 73 or, <laughs> I mean, it's not no. anything like that. Okay. <laughs> No, there's no uh, no link with that as far as you can see. It's not all they're not all the same date or the same okay. age or anything <laughs> like that. Is is this is this church even that old? That's Usually very... they put a, put a a date above the door, don't they? Or... They specified it was a new church, actually, wasn't it? Fairly new, anyway. Well, it's been renovated. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go looking around. As soon as I hear that, I'm going to go looking around for an actual, like, an old date in the old stonework, see if I can find one of them, because that's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, where are you going to look around specifically? Uh, I imagine probably the entranceway would be quite logical, like, around the front the, the front arch of the front door, if it looks like that's original in some way. Maybe lower the lower stones as well or something. I don't know. Um, so, can you make me... Is anybody else looking as well? Muted. I think I think since I suggested it, I'll be having a look as well. Okay. I think anyone who's looking, if you can make me two spot hidden rolls and tell me whether you pass or fail each one. 
<laughs> I think I know why there's a second one. <laughs> oh, 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 99. <laughs> <laughs> I passed the second. You just go. I uh, I passed the first one, and I passed the second one. Great. I rolled really low there. <laughs> so Dane is um, still hanging around. So hasn't gone to the entrance yet. Okay. Um. So. Um. Uh, Jemima and Esther at a similar time find a stone that's marked 1719 that seems to be a, you know, sort of a, a building date stone. Um, however, um, Esther continues sort of poking around the, the lower areas and uh, moving a little bit of dirt aside, having spotted something that didn't just look like natural stonework, um, spots a date of 1553. Okay, so it's been so rebuilt. It, yeah, it seems that the it may have been taken down to the foundations at some point and built, or at least somewhere down near the foundations and built back up again. I, uh, I'll, uh, go, Dr. Wallace, did you, uh, did you see this date here? And point to it at the foundations. I'll, uh, glance down and be like, oh, well spotted. Ah, it is old then. I was thinking it wouldn't have made sense otherwise, unless they, I guess, completely rebuilt and shifted things. Ah, well done. So, Why I would guess... that be down there? Does it look like it's fallen off if it's in the ground? Because they wouldn't have put the stone. Muted Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's like um, it's a low stone within the building, so it, so it is part of the building, mm -hmm. um, but it's just yeah, it very low down. Sort of, you, you can you're not sure whether it's just because you you know that that's there, but you kind of think that you can maybe see a line of stone where below is older than above. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not it's not unusual. An old, very old church, as expected. Yeah. I'll just say, um, I don't know a lot about churches, but uh, I guess that's what would be expected. Yeah, neither do I. Um, certainly makes sense. Hmm. What was the date again, Johnny? Sorry. Uh, the the old earlier one. date is fifteen fifty three. Okay, I, I'll kind of wander over to the others and say, looks like we have a date of fifteen fifty three. Well done, Esther, for spotting it. So, very old originally. Yeah. So the the burial date being that doesn't seem weird. Yeah. There are no other families here, right? It's just um, sorry, Johnny. It's just the the single family that's inside. Um, in the burial aisle, yes, yeah. So there are there there is a graveyard. Um, so you may find that there are other old families in the village, but this is the only one that's inside the church. It was, the name was a, a, a man, right, as well, that died, the Menzies. Yes, um, it was William Menzies. Okay. Presumably, I remember that. Um, Jeremy will go, uh, William Menzies then, an older man, that's going to be one that's going to end up in this aisle, it looks like. So, uh, presumably an important person. More impact on the village. <laughs> Presumably then he's the sort of head of the family. Oh, sorry. William Menzies was the oldest thing that you could find in there. Donald Menzies is the man who has died in the village. Yeah, Donald. I said Donald. <laughs> <clears throat> mm -hmm. I don't know much about traditional villagers up here, though. I'm, I'm assuming they don't have some sort of... <laughs> I think Jemima is going to be very insulting now. Be like traditional leader or something in the village. <laughs> I think um, 
I think Esther's looking like a little bit, kind of a little bit tired with this all just being like, you know, a, a feeling kind of like at a loose end and still very like frustrated about being mm. stuck here. Mm. And more than anything, she's actually just very worried about spending the night. <laughs> um, and I think uh, she's going to say, um, this is uh, all, all very well. But I'm, uh, I must say, I'm quite nervous about spending the night after we had such an odd thing happen, and um, and then someone dies the next day. It's just very uncanny, um, and I'd uh, I'd quite like to go and just uh, have a look around the pub and make sure we're all uh, we're all set there for uh, for tonight, you know doors, windows, locks, that sort of thing. None of those explain the strange things that have been going on, though, other than the drawings on the door. No, but they protect us from them. They protect us from the dream? I don't know about you, but I'd rather not wake up with a strange drawing on my door. Hmm. Not something I'd say, but again thought I'd say. I think we can try to be proactive tonight. I think it will be helpful for us to think about doing a final check of the pub. Maybe we can ask the, the barkeep if we can block the door again. And he, he might feel like we're being ridiculous, but Esther, I think, I think you're right. We need to be very careful here. I, I'd prefer that. Thank you. I guess we start to wander back. Be, sorry. Go on, go on. I was going to ask uh, Melvin if um, the person in the shop seemed very helpful, whether we might want to ask some advice from a third party. Uh, yeah, she seemed perfect, perfectly friendly, uh, about as friendly as most of the people that we've encountered, not that we've encountered many really, but you know, most of the people we've encountered been friendly she seemed perfectly hospitable not the sort of person that would uh well, not the sort of person that would draw on our door would, would any of you have a problem with showing her the drawing i'm not so sure about that um hmm. i guess we might not want to draw any more attention to ourselves hmm I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to make of any of this. Certainly, uh, we could go have a talk with her at least, see what she thinks about if there's been any other break-ins in town or any strange occurrences. I, I, I don't know. If she's there still, given what's happened. It's worth a shot. Do you, maybe we all, shouldn't all descend on them. I, I'll, go, I'll go with you, Melvin. and Maybe uh, the others can... Have a look around the pub. Is that, is that I'd okay really with quite like to go back to the pub. Um, so yes, I will go. I'll join you, Esther. Let's see if we can get prepared. Okay. Lead the way, Melvin. <laughs> Melvin okay. Lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Esther and Dane head back to the pub. Um, upon opening the door, you uh, see. Duncan sat on his stool behind the bar, um, one one head in his hands, and uh, one hand on his head. Sorry, not well, he's only got one head. That's not a. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it begins. <laughs> um, one head in his hand, one on the bar. No, um, and uh, he's uh, holding a whiskey glass, which is almost empty. I'll, uh, I'll look at Dane and just be like, um, has, um, has Duncan noticed that we've come in or it's just oblivious? You haven't noticed him noticing. <laughs> he may, he may have heard you and just presumed it was one of you and chosen not to, to look up, but cause it, it's, it's, um, it's probably pr not prime time for the pub it's like early afternoon 
on a weekday. So he, he might have just presumed that it was you guys coming in. So I think Ben will sort of step over to the bar, not too close, but just say, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about what happened. Oh, um, I certainly going to. Uh... Um, uh, yes, it'll have a bit of a knock on effect, I think. Are you Are you feeling OK? don't look very well no i'm fine um another, another one of these and i'll be uh right as rain um do do either of you or uh or um dr wallace or mr Caffey need to use my phone to call anybody um following the um the news I, about the I'm train perfectly all right thank you but um perhaps someone else does uh I know Mr. McAfee probably would want to uh, inform his uncle that he won't be making it to Glasgow. Um, right. Okay. Um, yeah, so well, poss you, you're all welcome to use it. Back. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's no problem. It's the least I can do. Uh, of course. It's understandable. Um, was a... Uh, was uh, Jimmy Jimmy close to uh, to Donald Menzies, or Mr. Menzies? Um, what? Well, uh, oh, um, well, you know, it's a, it's a small village. Everybody knows everybody, and um, you know, Jimmy's um, his uh, his car is actually the only one that's free today with there's, there's a lot of uh, farming folk around and um you know a lot of them are uh left out at the at the farms in sheds um and you know jimmy kind of just runs out in the morning save everybody running the horses over to town um so his being here uh and also there's a lot of a lot of things already in the the carts that are out there so um it's just it's it's terrible fortune to be honest um but yes. i mean as for uh jimmy's closeness with uh with mr menzies there it's only uh it's only you know by proximity in a village this size i don't think that there was uh, a particular bond between them oh of course i uh he's uh just seems quite unfortunate as it is be very sad to think that uh, another tragedy would befall him. Um, you mentioned there's some knock-on effects for you and I'm conscious that we're quite a burden on you at this time. Is there anything we can do to help? I would not consider you a burden, Mr Harrow, not at all. Um, that's very kind of you and far too much of an offer. Um, the The best thing for me would be if you could all have a good night's sleep and uh, be on your way tomorrow. I mean that in the kindest way possible. I, I don't want rid of you by any stretch. Just uh, want to provide the service that I agreed to provide and um, have you safely on your way to Glasgow. I think at, at this point, I think I'll sort of sit down at the, the bar next to him and just very, uh, very quietly go, um, I, I'm very sorry to bother you with, it, with this, but obviously I'm still very shook up about um, what happened last night and uh, all these occurrences. It's a bit unsettling. Um, um, I, I know I know you said that, that that was nothing with the priest in saying that we shouldn't stay here, but it's it's still quite it's still quite unsettling to have heard that and then all these things happen. Are you uh, are you are you sure there's nothing else you can tell us? Nothing else we should know? No, you know. And, uh, um, I think I've got some. I've got fast talk. I don't know if that would help. I'm quite good at that kind of thing. Um, you can make a roll. Let's make okay. a roll. Um. Yep. I have sixty-five, and I got fifty-six. <laughs> cool. Um. He uh, pulls out another two whiskey glasses 
and kind of looks at you both to see whether you want a, a drink. Um, yes, that would be that would be fantastic. Thank you. Pours himself another one, and you two each each a glass, and um, he says. The thing about Johnny Moore is um, quite an insular man, you know. Being a being a man of God in a village like this, and um, you know, having having been away and and seen the things that he's seen, like like poor Jimmy. Uh, You know, some people aren't too keen on strangers, as they see it, getting involved in their business. Obviously, some of my business is strangers, so I'm not one to be behaving like that. But um, you may find a couple of people like that here, unfortunately. It's just odd that they'd want to get involved in our business when we were so you know, keen to leave. Uh, it's not like we're coming here to uh, to stay, like uh, um, no, of course, Mr. Yes. William or any or Willie. <laughs> um, it's a uh, it's just unsettling to. Uh, I mean, I I, I understand that uh, often. Uh, considering considering the uh, how well. The war was only a short time ago, and uh, I'm sure there was a lot of fear. And stra it makes perfect sense that strangers are are uh, sus uh, suspected and feared. But um, it's very, very odd way to to show that fear, drawing on someone's door in the middle of the night. Uh, well, um, you think that was you think that was John. I'm not. I'm not sure, really. I I only wanted to talk to him because I thought perhaps he knew. Uh, I mean, he he obviously didn't want us to stay, and um, and then I tell you a little secret that may or may not make you feel a little better is uh, <laughs> is uh, when um, when Willie decided to stay here for a a few more days. I had a very similar conversation with the vicar about him. So just to let you know, it's not personal. Oh, of course. Um, but Willie didn't have anything drawn in his door. Is it perhaps the rooms were in not, and not us? Uh, nothing strange has happened here before this, uh, while I've been running, running the place. So, um, well, well, thank you for hearing me out. I know it's not the best time for such a discussion. No, of course. It's, uh, I understand your concerns. He drinks the rest of his whiskey. <laughs> I, I think I'll follow suit. <laughs> like... Duncan, you've, you've been a fantastic host to us, um, but we'd, we'd appreciate it if you are meeting with the vicar or, or anyone else for that matter uh, over the coming few hours or days. If you would let them know that we want to keep quiet, we want to keep ourselves to ourselves and we hope to be leaving as soon as possible. I hope that will assuage some of their concerns. Of course, um, if I see him, I'll pass that along. Although, you know, you're, you're as, uh, there's no reason for you to feel obliged to stay out of people's ways. That's, uh, it's the only thing I would say. Um, although at the present time, with what's, what's occurred, it, it may be wise. Um, for those who are already a little that way out, um, it may be sensible to keep your heads down. Um, there's some lovely walks around the the village that I'd be happy to, um, you know, give you some information on if you wanted to stay out of the the village centre for the afternoon. Um, that would Willie's be very gone nice, down to the you. lake. Um, I know you're getting on with him very well. Um, there's also uh, there's some some nice walks up in the the hill at the back of the village there, which um, Mr. Harrow, I know it's not quite a mountain, but uh, I'm sure there's some some climbs up there that you might enjoy. Um, and then, of course, if you just on the way to the the lake, there's a, a number of farms um, which are lovely to to look at, and the 
the sunshine. Um, anyway, I must be uh, I must be getting on. I'm afraid I have some things to to attend to. Um, but just let me know if I can uh, if I can be of any more help to you. Yes. Um, what what time would you uh, want us back for uh, for uh, dinner and that sort of thing? Oh, of course. Uh, let's see. Does six thirty work for you, Mr. Harrow? That sounds fine to me. Okay. Yeah. You're about you. two o'clock now, so it's a decent amount of time still before you. Okay. Thank you um, very much. I uh, I hope you don't mind. I uh, I took a the liberty of making a few jam sandwiches for us um, earlier just to tide us over for now. Um, oh, of course not. No, no. Thank you. Uh, at the shop. Um, so Jemima obviously has not seen the shop before. Um, maybe seems a little strange to just be wandering up to essentially the front door of a house. Um, but that's where Melvin leads you. <laughs> um I'll probably be like this is a shop. <laughs> um yeah, it was uh that's where I came earlier. I hope it was a shop, otherwise I just bought <laughs> one's house. Do you mind we'll probably look a little a bit concerned, believing that Melvin would potentially just have done that <laughs> 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 and let you lead the way. <laughs> uh yeah. Melvin will try walk into the shop. Cool. Uh, little little bell rings on the door again. Um, there's not the the woman from before isn't in here currently. Uh, you can hear some sort of shuffling about upstairs, uh, and then sort of footsteps coming down the stairs, uh, and she appears around the corner, um, looking a bit sort of flustered, having rushed down. Um, oh, 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 hello again, uh, Mister. Um... Uh, Melvin, Melvin, Kathy, yes. Hello, uh, nice to see you again. Uh, uh, can I please feel free to browse? This out of cat, I've completely forgotten what we've came in here to ask you for. <laughs> <laughs> we were basically wondering because she seemed like another friendly face, and we've only talked to them in the tavern. So we we're like, I wonder if she'll be like, I'd give us more of an idea if people in the town might be hostile, the village might be hostile to us, or. We weren't really sure if we were going to mention the weird stuff. Esther didn't want us to mention the weird stuff. It's up to okay. Melvin. <laughs> Jemima's <laughs> kind of standing behind you and maybe politely looking to peruse, waiting for you to say something. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Melvin then <laughs> says, uh, says uh, yeah, um, we just came uh, I mean, I mean, to have a look around. And then uh, we've not seen many friendly faces. I mean, we've not seen much of anyone really, but other than sort of Duncan and Willie at, at, at the pub. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the vicar, is he okay? Oh, Johnny, Johnny Moore. Yes. Um, believe it or not, um, he and I were uh, were seeing each other um, about, well, I mean, it was about... It was before he went away, let's... Uh, Let's leave it at that. And he came back, uh, you know, you know, he, yeah, not all of them came back. Um, but uh, has he been, has he been rude to you or? Um, no, nothing directly. Uh, just uh, we couldn't help but overhear some tense words uh, between him and Duncan or Mr. Mr. Kilbride, uh, we just didn't know whether he was a bit more um, like insular would be the word in terms of straight to strangers. Yes, I think you could probably say that about him now. Um, didn't used to be the case, but um, yes, with uh, with what I understand that he's been through and um, not really leaving this village for six years um you can imagine how people get but um you know he's no danger to anybody i don't think it's just it's just sad to see what can happen to people yes yes of, of course um 
no, not a, might be an an odd question, but he's not really. Is he? Is he an artist? Would you would you say? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, no, not as far as I'm aware. Um, if he is, he's keeping it secret from, well, everybody, I guess. Uh, okay. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'll uh, I'll peruse the shop with my my, my friend over there. And... Of course, yes. Um, I'm glad to hear that you're uh, you're getting on well with with well with uh, with Duncan. Uh, he's a lovely man. He is. He's uh, very hospitable. He's really doing us a, a favour. Uh, a gracious host, tonight. given what given the sad news that's gone around the village. <laughs> oh yes. Um, oh, that reminds me, actually, she says and looks up at the clock on the wall and goes, um, I don't want to hurry you, but um, I've got about five minutes until I need to be, uh, um, well, getting ready for um, for the funeral. You know. Uh, I guess I'll probably be like, of course, and kind of move to hurry Melvin out then. Looking a, a convenient excuse to not have to buy anything. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, sort of say, well, um, we'll probably be back back later then. Uh, leave you to get to get yourself to get ready. Uh, bye then. Of course, thank you. Bye. Nice to see you again. As we're like wandering back, I'll just turn to Melvin and be like, I had, I don't, I don't think, and we probably shouldn't mention the strange occurrences to anyone else i suppose it's probably mm. not uh a good look for us if uh if we're already not making many friends with the locals or already got some people out for us spreading yeah. tales like that is isn't gonna be great for us yeah not at all hmm. anyway we'll see You heading back to the pub? I suppose. Yeah. Cool. Um, so um, you, uh, Esther and Dane, we were you going to be heading back up to your rooms? Was that your plan after the conversation with Duncan? I think I would be kind of hanging around on the bottom floor for now in, in anticipation of Jemima and Melvin perhaps returning. Okay. Um, in that case, very shortly after your uh, conversation with Duncan has come to an end, um, Melvin and Jemima come back in. Hmm. Kind of just nod at them and then shrug. <laughs> <laughs> Did you learn anything? Um, nothing nothing really no uh we knew about the the vicar you know he was in the war and came back changed but unfortunately nothing massively unusual about that uh these days uh she didn't seem yeah to leave you know give us anything sort of hints to what what's going on not that we give her much information on our end either so I think we're we're still where we were earlier, I'm afraid. Yeah. Seems fairly friendly. Yeah, yes, we heard something something similar. Hmm. Um I'm assuming Mr. Cobride is gone now. Um, yes, yeah. yeah. Yes, we heard something similar from Mr. Kilbride about the vicar. Um seems he uh, he went through a lot. Although it seems that um, he may be struggling to uh, struggling to uh, fit in or acclimatize in this town, despite having been here for so long. Did Esther mention the drawings to us, by the way, that you found upstairs? I honestly can't remember, but I feel like I did. Okay. Not sure. If you feel like you did, that's cool. Um, I think you did. They they were actually in the. Um, Sort of the living area. There was a bookshelf. Okay. Assuming Jemima is aware of them, then I'll just be like, um, she didn't seem aware that he drew at all. Perhaps oddly, although maybe he's just a private man. 
Seems like he draws a lot, though. Hmm. Well, everyone has to have a hobby. Hmm. It'd be nice if that hobby didn't directly link itself to creepy crosses drawn in our doors. Hmm. Um, I, I, Mr. Kilbride says something that was very... Well, it set me on edge. Um, I don't know if you heard him say it too, Mr. Harrow, but he said that uh, it's difficult for a man of God in this town. Yeah, I heard the same. I think I think Duncan told us as much as he could, um, but he was also trying to reassure us. I'm not sure he succeeded. In this town? It's a very odd way of saying it's difficult for him. Hmm. Yes, that's what I thought. Just odd. He seemed very keen that we might take some time away from the village as well. I also, I don't know if there's going to be a funeral planned or something soon. Um, the the lady at the, the, the shop said that, didn't she, Melvin? She was going for a funeral yeah, now. She's uh, probably probably there by now. I mean, this this might not be entirely appropriate, but from the sounds of it, most of the village is going to be there. Um, if we wanted to take another look at the vicar's house or anything, presuming we can get in. There was okay. So I feel like this is a bit gamey because Steve said something that reminded me of something that I thought of when playing Jemima last week, but I'd forgotten about this week. <laughs> but I did have I the think thought that's last fine. I had the thought last week. Um, Jemima's going to kind of lean into everyone and look around uh, to make sure no one's there, but presumably, did you guys see, like, Duncan leave? Uh, he went into the, the back room, like the kitchen okay. area where he, he disappeared. Either way, if he's still there, he's a distant distance away, so I'll lean in to make sure no one could overhear us and just be like, the rooms. Only he or Willie knew where we were last night, unless he told someone, right? They couldn't have known where we were, specifically. I mean, unless they were just very lucky, but I doubt that's the sort of thing that was done with luck. It also seems very suspicious to me that he said it was all locked up and then suddenly someone got in. I know he's been a lovely host, but it's the most logical explanation to me. Johnny, I'm trying to remember, were the guests that came in on that first night, were they present in the pub when we were being shown our rooms or when we were unpacking or anything like that? The who, sorry? I, I might be misremembered, but I thought there was one guest in the pub just, when we just were Willie. Just, just Willie. Just Willie. Yeah, so he, Willie he came in as you were having the chat with Duncan, basically, and took himself off upstairs. How? He knew our rooms. Okay. How many rooms are there actually upstairs anyway, though? Uh, three. And the bathroom. Okay. So, so I might I might go to uh, uh, Dr. Wallace. I mean, um, well, I, I do agree to some of that. Obviously, it's very odd how someone could have gotten in when everything was supposed to be locked. Um, if, if they knew where Willie was staying, then they could have made, you know, hazard, hazarded a guess where we were. Hmm. It's a fair guess, you're right, but even so, it doesn't seem like the sort of thing someone would do on a guess. I guess if they were certain where Willie was, but... Hmm. Doesn't dissuade the the fact that Duncan said everything was locked. Well, I, I just feel that um, we should be particularly careful tonight. Hmm. Hopefully we can get out of here tomorrow. Hopefully, yes. Now... Do we want to stay and uh, watch a funeral? Or what do so, we want to do? I feel like at this point, Dane is kind of quite a little, starting to get a little bit overwhelmed with just being around everybody so much and, and the activity that he's quite keen to kind of, to go, the, 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 the walk that Duncan mentioned is sort of, primed him a little bit and he's quite keen to consider that but also doesn't want to let anybody um feel like he's just rushing off so he's getting like moving he's going to <laughs> <laughs> um so i think he'll say something like uh i don't know how you guys feel but i 
I don't feel like would be particularly welcome at the funeral. However, I'm, I could really do with a few hours away from this village. So uh, I think I'm going to, I'm going to head out and perhaps head to the hills or perhaps go and see Willie. I'm not sure. Um, anyone is welcome to join, but at the same time, I'm, I'm happy to, to head off by myself, but I, I'm not comfortable going to the funeral. I'd be glad of a walk. It would be nice to see the countryside, perhaps see the area from on high. Yes, I'd, I'd rather not stay here, actually. Yeah, I think some, some distance from everything here is would do us all uh, a, bit, a bit of good. Uh, I do need to make a, a quick phone call, uh, obviously, let them know. Uh, I'm not going to, to be there today. Uh, well, um, uh, Mr. Kilbride said you're welcome to use the phone whenever. Um, in fact, all of us are. So if anybody needs to make any calls... Um... I don't imagine Dr. Sterling will miss me much. <laughs> I will go grab my coat in the meantime from my room. And uh, shall we meet back here? I will, uh, I will. I've already got my coat on, so I'm all ready. Yeah, I've also got my coat on. I think I will just pop outside the door and have a quick look up to the church while we're waiting for people to get ready. Okay. Um, Duncan had said previously to just knock on the door to the uh, the back area if you needed anything. So if Melvin wants to use the phone, were you planning on doing that now, Jack? Yeah, let, let's get it over with. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um. Okay. Um. So you knock and uh, you hear it, uh, oh, just, just a minute, and uh, kind of the clattering of a couple of pans. Um, and then he comes and opens the door. Um, this is probably the first time you've properly seen into the this back room. So this is a uh, kitchen area. Um, it doesn't look like... Um, it looks more like a home kitchen area than a sort of, you know, commercial kitchen. Um and he says, ah, Mr. Caffey, um, how can I be of assistance? Um, I was just wondering if uh, I could just borrow your telephone. Uh, I've just got to... Oh, of course, of course. Right. Um, just just come through. And uh, he leads you through the kitchen. Um, and this takes you into what you presume is his living room, um, which has uh, two um chairs with a so, so almost like smoking chairs with a, a small circular table between them um and there is there is an ashtray on there as well uh and there's a um another uh record player in here and um a phone um, and he says please help yourself um i'll make myself scarce and he goes back through to the kitchen and closes the door behind him Okay, yeah. Uh, Melvin will bring ahead and let the office know that he's, uh, yeah, well, he's going to be delayed again. Yep, so that <laughs> rings uh, a number of times. And just as Melvin's thinking of hanging the phone up because nobody's going to answer, there's the, the click of the receiver being picked up and. Um, Hello. Oh, hello. It's uh, it, it, it's Melvin. Oh, um, hello, hello, young Mister Caffey. Um, it's uh, yes, it's nice to hear from you. Um, would you? Uh, oh, um, your uncle's actually out of the office on business at the moment. Um, do you need me to to pass a message on for him? Um. Oh, have you arrived safely in Glasgow? Is that why you're calling? Uh, unfortunately, not. Uh. Um, I oh dear! Know, nothing too serious. I I hope uh, it's uh, we uh, there was a a problem with the trains and we had to spend a night in this village and unfortunately it being a remote village we uh we're again having to spend another night but we've but we've been assured that tomorrow we should be should be getting out. Getting oh out yes, there, he so. he did he did mention that actually. Um, uh, oh sorry, there's somebody on the other line. She just puts you on hold. That was a relief, though. It was... 
is it getting like a, a really uncomfortable sort of amount of time that he's on hold now? It's been or... probably a minute. Are you staying on? Uh, I think he's going to start thinking about putting the phone down. Uh, aware that people uh, are waiting for him. <laughs> it comes off hold. <sighs> Melvin. Hello, Uncle. I understand Hello. you're not going to get to Glasgow again this evening. It's not my fault. Um, there was, no. uh, again, you know, we're in this village. Uh, the, the trains had sorted for us and and um, with things the way they are, there was somebody, uh, our, our uh, arrangement to, to, to be on the train on time has sort of fallen through, but they've assured You've us... You've still got all of the documents, haven't you, Melvin? Um, y yeah, yes, I've got them. I've got them. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to send somebody else up on the train to Glasgow in the morning. Then you can meet them there. They can be starting things off until you get there, I guess. Uh, okay, I, I am I am sorry, Uncle. Uh, I, none of this was it wasn't my intention. No. No, it never is. Goodbye, Melvin. Bye. Puts the phone down. Uh, and with that, sort of, Melvin will make his way back out to the front. Does what's the expression on his face like when he comes back through? It's probably. Uh, I think because he had the sort of relief first that it wasn't his uncle on the phone, <laughs> and then it hits him even harder when it it was. So he's probably <laughs> a bit down. Can you make me a sanity roll, Jack? I think. Oh, no. <laughs> so, at this so evil. <laughs> the ultimate existential uh, threat. So I want to roll under, don't I? You do. Okay, so I, yeah, I failed. <laughs> okay. Um, just lose one point of sanity for me, please. Okay. So, so presumably Melvin does look visibly shaken. <laughs> yeah, I think, he, I think he would do after that, considering, um, yeah. You know, at the end of this story, if Melvin loses his mind, will it be able to officially say that your uncle contributed to, like, your eventual demise? I mean, <laughs> there's probably a reason I only started with uh, 45 sanity. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> I was uh, outside, just having a glance up towards the church. I was wondering if, like, given that the lady at the shop said she was heading, getting ready for a funeral, can I see, like, it looks like this funeral preparation's going on? I'm not going up, I was just having a glance. Um, you do see, um, through the windows where you've sort of seen movement before, um, if you sort of catch out of the, if you're looking up at the church, you can kind of catch out of the corner of your eye that, you know, there's a number of people moving around inside the houses more so than you'd seen previously. And they do all seem to be in black. <laughs> um, you haven't seen anybody at the church yet. Okay, okay. So it, it's not like either the funerals are way away, presumably at this point. It's not like they're all gathering outside or something. Okay, fair enough. Hmm. I'll just come back inside them, ready to go. Should we go for our walk then, Mr. Caffey? Uh, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, it's, it's okay. Yes, I think, I think a walk would be quite nice right now. I will sort of potter downstairs at this point, fully kitted out. <laughs> <laughs> Crampons and ice axes. And... <laughs> I think uh, I think Esther, who's obviously still got her cane, and is like keen to get away from the village, but also slightly hesitant about this walk. Kind of gives Mister Harrow a slightly worried look. He's all kitted out. She's just like looks at her cane and her like not particularly. They're not like walking shoes. She's just like. Hmm. <laughs> um, so Duncan mentioned I'll walk up to the hills but perhaps we can head to the lake if everybody's keen I feel like uh, firstly we can say hello to Willie but also perhaps it will be a, a more straightforward travel Duncan mentioned it was quite a distance to the lake though didn't he it's a couple of miles to the lake okay not too bad and Johnny, it's about two still, or like half past two or something. We've got four yes. hours. Yes, yeah, yeah. 
early to mid afternoon. Yeah. Well, perhaps we can uh, walk back with Willie if we uh, find him there uh, later on. That sounds okay. great. Then. Thanks all for joining me. So you're heading to the lake. We're all eager to be away. I'm not sure we want to stay here. Okay. By the way, the gramophone's off now, right? <laughs> it is off. Yes. Okay. I'll like give it like a glance music. when I say, "Yeah." I'll give it like a glance when I say "here" and then just wander out. <laughs> so you um, head out of the pub and you turn right to go out of the village uh, that way towards the lake. Um, obviously, passing the vicar's house, you spot a couple of people wearing black walking towards you, having just left their house. Um, and actually, by the time you get to properly the end of the village, because there's about 20 houses down this way, you've passed a couple of small groups of people heading towards the church mm -hmm. in their funeral attire. Um, they don't massively pay you any attention. Um, and uh, just kind of solemnly walking along. Um and then you are out of the end of the village and passing through a sort of um, valley between two hill edges. Um, and the weather's currently quite pleasant for, um, for a, a, a February day. It's still quite crisp, um, cold and sunny. Mm -hmm. So you round a, a small corner in this sort of valley area and ahead of you you see sloping downwards and then you see a large lake in front of you um surrounded by a couple of farms and then sort of larger hills around to the outside it's, it's quite a quite a pleasant breathtaking view um uh, you know quite a quite a nice spot of beauty amidst your uh, strange night and day that you've been having. I will. Uh, I will stop and get my uh, box brownie camera out of my pack and find a nice rock to set it upon and take a moment to take a picture of the sea. <laughs> nice. I think uh, I will uh, see this, and I, I've got a pair of binoculars, little little ones. So uh, I think I uh, might get them out and just have a peer through at the lake, just sort of. Being a tourist. Hmm. Uh, are you planning on fully heading down to the lake? What sort of time is it in the day? It's still light, isn't it? Yeah, so you're getting on towards three o'clock. You think it'll probably be just after three by the time that you get there. So you could probably have half an hour there or so and still get back for sunset proper. I'll probably just look to Esther and be like, "Is your, your, you're okay to go further? Um, how steep is the hill down to the lake? Would you say? It's a gentle slope. It's not a oh, okay then. It's not uh, a big yes. dip or anything. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, let Let's go. I'm not in any hurry to get back. Did you see Willie through your binoculars? Uh, I'm not sure how good they are. I'll have to find out. You'd have certainly been able to spot um, a couple of boats out on the lake, probably fishing boats. Yeah. Um, depending on how good your binoculars are, you might have seen with a bit more detail. But um, yeah, you're still about a mile away at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you head down, you um, pass uh, between a farm on either side of the, um, the road. And uh, about 20 minutes later, you get to the edge of the lake. Um, about 100 metres away, you can see Willie stood talking to a fisherman at the edge of the lake. He's pulled his boat in and is sort of um, dragging a, a net with a fish. And, um, so, yeah, they look to be relatively deep in conversation. Um, do you want to go say hi? I think they shall slang you bar and see mm -hmm. if he gets a reaction. Um about a second later than you would expect because you're a bit of a distance away. Um, with you, Willie kind of goes, <laughs> waves at you from afar. Um, 
and sort of beckons you over as well and then continues his conversation with the fisherman. We'll follow your follow your lead down, I presume, then, Dave, if you were waving. <laughs> so we can, if we walk up to the shore, are we close enough to to talk to, to Woody or not, really? Oh, yeah, he's on the shore. Oh, he's yeah. on the shore. Baby yeah, boy. yeah, so the, the fisherman's brought his boat in and is sort of trawling in his stuff. Okay, so, yeah, we'll head on down. Um, yeah, so you, uh, you get up to him and he... Um, seems to be finishing off his conversation just as, as you arrive and uh he says oh hello um it's lovely to see you what do you not think this is just one of the most beautiful sights you've ever seen here it is lovely um of interest to uh you i'm sure uh doctor mm. as uh the world's first marine biologist <laughs> i'll just go <laughs> <laughs> I must um, make a note of that in my book, actually. Um, <laughs> do you know what? Can I put you all in my thanks? Because you've 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 really made my stay here something special. That would be wonderful. Thank yeah. you. I think she's got uh, Jemima like blushing a little bit now because that's the sort of thing that's quite like ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Get to be in a book. Priorities. <laughs> right. Um, well. Uh, uh, Robert's got to go back out um, and uh, try and get another load in before the the sundowns. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit here and have a have a wee drink. Um, pulls out a little flask, um, hip flask. Uh, would you care to join me? Yeah, that'll be. I, I think we've maybe we've got time, haven't we? I presume you're heading back before sunset. Oh, well. I am. I'm having about fifteen minutes here, and then I'm gonna head on back. <laughs> We should I think, sit here and we'll walk back with you. I think Jemima politely declines and has a wander along the shoreline a bit. Nice. Just Do you take any like samples or anything from anything? <laughs> I don't. I don't think she's exactly sampling, but she's looking to see if there's any interesting aquatic plants or anything like that. You know, just just sure. more for interest. Um, if you want to make me like a natural <laughs> world roll, and we sure. can see if you find anything interesting while this yeah. conversation's going. Why not? Why not? <laughs> so, um, have you had a good day so far? Hang on. Looks at his pocket watch. You should be, you should be well away by now. Uh, yes, we should. Unfortunately, there was, um, well, uh, Mr. Harrow, I think, can tell you. I, uh, Yes, I'm not sure if you've heard the news from the village. Um, no. But suffice, a gentleman um, has passed away. I, I believe oh. he was a very important figure in the village, and it's very oh, unfortunate thanks. news. And Donald Menzies, he's um, he seems to be a very important figure in the village, and and the result of which is that we we are staying another night here. Well. I'm sorry about that, but I have to say Glasgow's loss is Willie's gain. I'll I'll be happy to spend the evening with you again if you'll have me. Wonderful. It's good to have a friendly face around. Or four if you're me. I mean your four faces, not I have four faces. <laughs> um <laughs> How, how was the role was for uh <laughs> How was the role for Jemima's scouting? Sadly, I failed, and I really, I'm really annoyed about that because I wanted to get some sort of awesome eldritch myth <laughs> from this lake. <laughs> okay, um, you spot a bunch of things that look, you know, quite nice, um, sort of underwater ferny things, and a couple of interesting looking fish. But the fish you never quite managed to get a look at well enough before they've darted off again for you to be able to figure out if they're anything sort of unique to mm -hmm. what you're aware of. Um, but it certainly looks to be a healthy um, sort of... Um, Catchment. Yeah. 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 As, as I would expect up here, yeah. Yeah. I'll just come very, back looking happy. and Very clean air and very clean water. Yeah, yeah. Compared to <clears throat> London. <laughs> 
Um, so, yeah, you just sit and have a nice, uh, nice chat and drink with Willie, unless there's anything else specific that you wanted to speak to him about. Not that I can think of. I think so I'll uh, turn to uh, Dr. Wallace and go, uh, did you find anything interesting? Oh, I wasn't really looking for anything in particular, just uh, whenever I come to somewhere, a new water body like this, I can't help but uh, entertain my fascination. As, it, as I'd expect, a very healthy healthy catchment. Uh, the, uh, the water body drains from a variety of natural moorlands up above, looks very, yes, as I would expect. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll turn to Willie and go. You've been uh, talking to the fishermen quite a quite a bit. You must have an idea of, uh, you know, what they catch around here. Uh, what do they sustain on? Oh, um, there's some. Uh, I think there's some. What did he say? Not sharks. No. Uh, <laughs> <hang on>. <laughs> <laughs> Driver's uh, just like frowning. <laughs> I'll sort of give Dr. Wallace a look, just like hmm? What about um does a does a freshwater trout sound right? That that or, sounds uh, much much more likely. <laughs> yeah, I think it was probably probably that one. <laughs> um yes, I think that's the, the majority of what they have here from the sounds of it. Um never know, that may be what's for dinner. Speaking of, uh we should probably head back, I think, before uh you know we're in a we're in a valley here, so the the sun dips earlier than uh, than it otherwise would. Mm. And he gets up and sort of puts his hip flask away and sorts himself out, ready to go. I'll look up at the sun and be like, "This far north as well, it sets earlier." Um, yeah, and you head back. Um, so as you are heading back up along the main um sort of road of the village so passing the houses passing the vicar's house uh you don't see anyone in any of these not not that you might you might not be staring into the windows but you see no activity in any of the houses at all um and uh as you get back into the village square around the corner to enter the pub uh there is a mass of people um, all dressed in black and uh, next to the war memorial is Jimmy's cart with a casket on the back um, and you see the vicar stood at the front door of the church um, can we get the picture of the vicar up again Matt to refresh people's minds um, he stood looking almost exactly like that at the front door of the church. Um, and the um, there are a, a, a group of people that look like um, a family uh, stood sort of just outside the, the gate of the church um, looking at the, uh, the casket on the the cart so you take all of that in as you round the corner uh, nobody seems to turn and look at you um so is did you say the cart was at the church or in the middle of kind of town in front of the in front of the wall so th the car is sort of so the wall memorial and it is sort of in the center of this little square, but it is only a little square. So by being there, it's already very near the church. Gotcha. Um, and these people are all kind of stood around the area mm -hmm. here. Um, presumably waiting for that to go inside. And you've just rounded the corner as <clears> this is kind of all taking place. Um, and Jimmy is actually getting down off the cart as you come round. Do we have to go closer to this to get to the pub or... No, you're so, you're you're, lit, you're pretty much at the door of the pub as you round the corner, okay. so you you can go into the pub and avoid any further interaction with this. I will turn to Esther and be like, "Well, there's your vicar." Although I suppose now maybe not the time to confront him. Mm, yes, he does seem otherwise engaged. Um, uh, would you like to to stay, or do you think perhaps we should go inside? 
Hi, not sure we'll fit in here. All right. Anybody who wishes to watch can watch from the window. And I'll walk in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll follow in. Yeah, I think we'll, no, we will go in to the pool. I'll, prob I'll probably go in and then head to... Assuming, are the rooms like locked if we're not there? Probably they are, aren't they? Uh, yes. Um, you, between the two of you, have a key. Um, and Duncan also has a key to each of the rooms. Yeah, yeah. And our room looked out on the back, and Dana Melvin's looked out on the front towards. Correct. Where was that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I will, in fact, not even go into our room and just kind of wait at their door instead. <laughs> Willie's also looks out over the front as well. Okay, I'm probably not going to Willie's room. <laughs> yeah, I think Esther will probably go upstairs, but she's, uh, yeah, she's kind of fed up and she just wants to sort of clean up after like going for a long walk and stuff. So she's probably mm -hmm. just going to go into the bathroom. Yeah. Assuming that Dane and Melvin let me in. Yeah. <laughs> just I will. <laughs> yeah, I will. Apparently, I'm feeling very nosy right now. I will immediately pull up a chair to the window and just kind of look over the crowd of people, see who I recognize and what's going on. Just kind of watching generally, see if I'm still kind of thinking there's something really weird going on in this village. So I'm just looking to see if anything looks weird about the funeral. OK, um, you recognize uh, Rachel from the shop. Mm -hmm. um, you see Duncan. Um, he stood quite near sort of the back away from the church um and um you you pick out you think from your memory the people that you passed on the way out of the village as well mm -hmm. um and uh was it i think it was the whole group of you that passed the family with the young girl yeah. this morning wasn't it yeah um so you also spot them um can if if you're looking obviously jemima is anybody else who is sort of peering out um could you make a psychology role for me <laughs> okay oh i passed with 10 psychology <laughs> <laughs> nice Uh, so I need 50 and I rolled a 44. Cool. You Is, is Melvin also looking, Jack? Uh, no. Uh, okay. I probably think he's checking on his documents that are hopefully still there. Yep. <laughs> Fine. Uh, <laughs> no, they're, just, they're not there. Melvin has a <laughs> crisis. All his sanity's um, gone. <laughs> so Dane and Jemima notice that the... The crowd as a whole is sort of reasonably still and somber. Um, and you each notice that the vicar and Duncan and the family that you passed this morning all have a slightly different air around them to everybody else, a kind of unease that the rest of the crowd doesn't particularly seem to share. I think I'll kind of look at Dane and go, just kind of point at them vaguely, but we probably both get the idea. Do they look like they stand out to you? Uh, does the rest of the village, they, they kind of look, I don't know how to put this, but... They look kind of like you would expect, like respectful, okay. somber, and, and quite still. Mm -hmm. um, Duncan, you spot his eyes kind of dancing around a bit, like he's not particularly comfortable there and he's sort of almost keeping an eye out. The uh, the vicar is kind of shuffling a little and sort of adjusting his shoulders, he's holding his Bible, he's sort of adjusting his shoulders every now and again or sort of, you know, sort of adjusting his body positioning slightly. Um, and the the family um you it's mostly the the daughter actually looks reasonably okay like quite well behaved actually for a a young girl you know sort of being made to stand still and be respectful it but the the dad especially looks 
quite uncomfortable. Again, sort of almost on edge. So I guess then we'll say maybe something's gone wrong. wrong. It looks like something something has gone wrong. At a funeral, what could go wrong? Or I with no idea. you mean with the death? death? The um, the the family that was stood uh, near the church that you presume is this deceased man's family. Um, the uh, the eldest uh, man from there heads over towards the cart, um, and he and a couple of other men from the the crowd and um, Jimmy um, lift the casket. Um, and start carrying it towards the church, and the crowd kind of falls in behind them. Uh, Duncan's still at the back of the crowd. Yeah, he's it, not. He's not. He's not going to be literally at the back as it folds in. But he's he, he's not at the front. If he's yeah, does um, does he look like he's standing there to try and like just kind of be out of the way and avoid people, or is he like watching? Or uh, if I can't tell, that's fine. Um, I would say from your psychology role, he almost looks like he doesn't. Um, it's not that he doesn't feel welcome, but um, you know, if it, almost like if you're somebody's plus one at a wedding and you don't really know anybody else at the wedding, okay, it's almost like that kind of like he he is meant to be there, but he feels like he isn't almost. Okay, I think I'll say that today, and then I'll say, well, Duncan looks like he doesn't feel comfortable being part of this, but the other two, I mean, not so much, because, I mean, he's bearing, he's being the pallbearer, and then there's the, the priest. Well, uncomfortable, I mean, being awkward at a funeral, yeah, if you're sad, but this, it's a, it's a strange reaction, isn't it? I hope we, I hope our presence here hasn't affected Duncan and his, his status in the village. He, he doesn't look particularly welcome there. Hmm. By the way, Johnny, how big is this window? Can I just ask? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's what would this be? Three foot, something like that. Okay, that's fine then. So we're still per perfectly at a comfortable distance from each other. When I would like squeeze up to look out the window, I was just no, 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 you're okay. That's fine then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and everybody uh, starts to filter up the um, up the path to the church, uh, and the vicar stands to the side as the the casket is taken in, and then follows in behind them, and everybody filters in behind them, and even through the window you hear the door thunk close on the church. Mm -hmm. Oh, it really is the whole village in there. It really is. I will head back through to our room. Uh, Esther, what are you like still awake in there or something? I'm guessing. Oh yeah, I was in the I was in the bathroom, sort of fashioning up, but I think I'll be back in. Uh, it's been a while, right I think. So I'll as you're heading through. across the hall, Jemima's heading across the hall. Uh, Willie comes out of his room, um, and goes, uh, "I don't mean to imply that yous are nosy, um, but did you just see that?" <laughs> <laughs> don't mean to imply that you're nosy either but I'm guessing you did too hi did it look something about it while I was outside there just uh, yeah it made me a little bit uncomfortable I mean it's a funeral it's not supposed to be comfortable but it made me a little oh. you know so can I just have a clarification as to how we felt about it earlier? Everything in the funeral felt perfectly normal except those individual people. Is that kind of how that was seeming to us? It was sad, but it was normal. It was those people that made it seem weird. Yeah, unless it was the other way around. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Probably that. They, yeah. they certainly seem comfortable. Okay, in that case, I would probably say to Willie, um, certain individuals didn't seem very comfortable there, did they? No, and one of them's our, uh, our Duncan. I'm guessing um, you don't know him well enough to know you, this village isn't particularly familiar with you either, is it? No, I've only been here a few days now. Um, the only... Uh, 
Yeah, the only strange thing I've had while being here is I did hear the, uh, well, I heard raised voices downstairs, one of them being Duncan, and I figured out afterwards from uh, using my window that the other one was the vicar, and um, he didn't sound particularly happy about me being here. It was weird, and it was sort of, it was just after I'd, well, it was only a few minutes after I'd, uh, booked a few more days and to stay, so I'm not. It's very strange. I was originally going to be leaving before uh, you fine folks arrived, um, but it was so nice here, and, uh, and there were, you know, obviously I hadn't been down to the lake and spoken to the fishermen, uh, so um, I decided to stay for a few more days, and it was after that that uh, I literally, literally minutes. And Duncan, has he been as hospitable to you as he has been to us during his stay? Oh, absolutely. That nothing is too much for Duncan. It's uh, it's odd. Uh, I I probably will have come out into the hall and we'll be hearing this discussion of things are being said. Although it's odd um, that uh, that the 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 vicar knew you were staying so immediately. Well, I, I, I don't know if he did. I was obviously already here, but um, the, just the timing is, I'm sure you'll agree, the timing is very strange. I don't know for definite that he was aware that I was staying longer. It's just, uh, yeah, very weird. Uh, he, he was, uh, yeah, well, uh, you'll, it'll be no surprise to you that he, uh, he said pretty much the same thing about us when we arrived. Um, I overheard his conversation with Mr. Kilbride. He's a... Uh, doesn't seem to want anybody in the village. Oh, is that why he sent me spinning when he came charging out of the door when you had shown up? Yeah, okay, that makes yes. a little more sense. Yeah, I uh, put it down to sort of, you know, troubled times and whatnot. But but what with those things drawn on our doors? Aye, that was weird. Willie, you definitely haven't had any other strange. Uh, feelings or anything while you've been around here have you on Un, uh, just uh, unusual uh, i don't quite know how to describe it well i don't think so but you know i i've mostly lived in small villages uh, as far as i'm aware use of city folks and it might just be the the shift in that that's um that's made you feel uncomfortable. I'm, uh, I wouldn't like to, to to put those words in your mouth, but um, not, no, I don't think so. Does well, I mean, you've spent a lot of time in small villages. Does these kind of things usually occur with people doing odd things with chalk on people's doors in the middle of the night? Not things like that. I wouldn't say in the past, but um. You know, everything's just a little more focused in mm. in, in these places. Yes, um, it seemed that um, Donald Menzies was a very uh, important person. He, he's got his family go back generations. They've got an entire aisle in the church. Oh, is that right? They're the only ones in there. Oh, that is interesting. Maybe I should put that in my book. Mm. Yeah, they they go all the way back. I I believe. Uh, well, the the church we we looked, we looked at some of the foundations and we found a date for what was it? Fifteen, Doctor Wallace? What was it? Uh, my memory 15. says fifteen thirty-seven, but I have no idea if that's correct. It was fifteen fifty-three. Fifty-three. I know. Don't know where that number came from. <laughs> fifteen fifty-three, and it it looked like there were uh, there were uh, memorials to to match for uh, each, I suppose. Uh, head of the Menzies family going all the way back to that Goodness original me. date. So very, very unique. Well, they do, I mean, literally the whole village was at the funeral, so they must be quite important to the village, I guess. Um, mm. It's very interesting. Maybe this is a, this could be an idea for another book for me, Family Histories in Small Villages. Certainly an ancient one. That is very strange, though, yes. Um, 
Hmm. You haven't talked to the vicar at all, have you? Uh, no, no, no. Um, I think I've maybe seen him walk across the village a couple of times, but apart from that, the only time I've particularly been aware of him is uh, when I heard him shouting his head off about me downstairs. Hmm. Strange timing. Very strange. I think Jemima will go and head off to the bathroom at that point. Make herself scarce for a moment. Well, um, well, I, I, it looks like uh, Duncan uh, might be a little while. Should we? Uh, should we go downstairs and uh, have a drink or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot else for us to do. We may as well wait downstairs. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck in our rooms all night. Mm. Yeah, I, I will join, although having not slept very much last night, I don't think I'll be staying up too long. If I have a moment to catch Esther, um, probably you probably go downstairs in the bathroom, so I'll... I'll probably go downstairs with you and then just kind of, or to meet you and then motion you to one side or we're downstairs perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of, while I wasn't in the priest of the vicar's house when you were searching it, I was very aware that you were searching it. So I'll be like, Esther, everyone's in the church now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I know. I'm not very trusting of Duncan here. Well, I mean, I understand. I understand logically your distrust. Although to me, he seems like the uh, the uh, least the the least strange of our uh, of the village. Um, seems the village is strange, and he is not. But uh, are, are you suggesting we? Uh, we have a closer look? Oh, I, uh, I, I don't know what I'm suggesting. I, I don't know. It's just, I still can't get over that he's, he said he locked everything. Everything was perfectly secured. No one else should have the key or be able to get in. Suddenly someone gets in and out without him having any idea what's going on until they've already shut the door. It doesn't make sense to me that all this, he, he has no idea. I don't know. Well, I, we can have a look around, look for the, uh, the entrances and the exits. Um, that might make me feel better. At the very least, we could... See where they all are around the building. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, I believe the, the we did mention this to the others. I'm so, uh, but but perhaps would you prefer to do it privately? Or? Maybe that's for the best. <laughs> well, okay. Um, where would you like to start? Uh, well, we know about the front entrance, so I'll say I'll probably guess as well. We're passing this. Shall we, we? Me and Esther are just going to take a look around the back entrances, just for our own uh, peace of mind. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you're heading out the front and sort of working your well, way around the building. My my thinking was to head behind the bar and see what it looked like back there. Presumably that. Okay. Duncan didn't really mind at this point, and people had already been back there anyway, so I was curious to see what the back entrance to there looked like. Sure. Um, so you cool obviously you, you obviously see what Melvin saw, so um, sort of a, a home kitchen as opposed to um, <clears throat> like a fancy restaurant kitchen. Um, and then the door off that takes you into what seems to be a living room or sitting room, and... Um, two sort of smoking chairs with a table between with an ashtray on and um, there's a record player in here the telephone um there is a bookshelf uh on top of which is sat a bible um and there is another door off this room if you want to take that so we haven't found a back entrance of the, the building yet so i will not yet no so basically um yeah. just in terms of the layout so you've come through um in through the kitchen and then a door out of that and this puts you basically under the hallway upstairs mm -hmm. um yeah. so um you've yeah. then got um yeah a, a door off 
I head through the door unless I see anything very unusual in this room. Like the windows are all sound and everything. It's not like one of them has been broken <laughs> recently or something. Or... No, no. So the, there's only um, there's only one window from this room to outside. Mm. Um, cool. And then, yeah. So the next room along um, is a bedroom. Um, Does Esther go? I was going to say, I would probably just uh, pause and have a glance at the bookshelf as we're going past. Uh, yep, there are some uh, classics on here, a couple of books of poetry, um, a, uh, a, um, a book about um, the history of uh, fishing boats, um, nothing of particular interest, you don't think? Um so yeah, the next room through is a bedroom, um, which has uh, a bed that is slightly larger than a single, but not quite a double, um, with um, sort of a, a woolen blanket on. Um, and uh, there's one window in this room again, out to the back. Um, and there's another door coming off this room to the right from where you came in. Um, Again, it's an internal door, not an external door. I'll just kind of mutter to myself, where is the entrance to his house? <laughs> and then open that door. Um, that's just a bathroom, um, like just a toilet and a sink. Um, so you back. presume I... yeah. that he just comes through the pub to get yeah. to here. Yeah. I'll kind of catch my surprise for a moment and be like, huh, oh, there's only a front door, I suppose. Small place. I'll, uh, I'll go, yes, well, um, I suppose it's economical. He did. We did um, see that there were some cellar doors the other the other day. Perhaps we'd just like to go and have a look in the cellar quickly. Um, that was from outside, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I'll although there, there will almost certainly be an entrance inside the pub. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Ah. We just go... Mm -hmm. I, I follow you unless, I, again, I see anything weird in the bedroom or the toilet, which I imagine um, I don't. <laughs> I'll probably go back into the kitchen. I assume that it's through a larder door or something. Mm -hmm. I, I also close all the doors, try and put it back as as it was. <laughs> I yeah. don't want to make it look like we were tramping through his house. Um, There is a, a trap door. Yeah, okay. Um, so um, it lifts, no problem. Um, and goes down. It is dark down there. I have a little flashlight on me. Okay. Pen light. Mm -hmm. um, which I, uh, I sort of like go, um, oh, it's quite dark down there. Um, I'll uh, just quickly turn this on. Um, is it? Is it? I can feel for a light switch, right? Does this place have electricity or not? Uh, not as far as you're aware in terms of like a mains. Okay, cool. Thing. I'll use my I'll use my is torch. It, to... Is it gas lights then? The pub it would would be gas lights, wouldn't it? Really? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there might be a gas light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll I'll sort of start going down with my little torch. I assume there's some steps to go down. And, yes. Uh, yeah, Doctor Wallace, you can see if there's a gas light. Yeah, I'll try and find a light to light. When yeah, um, light, about halfway down these steps, actually, there is a um, a wall mounted gas lantern. Cool. I'll light that then. Um, so, um, down here, there is, um, obviously sort of barrels, um, and, uh, you could presume that this area is also used as a sort of refrigerator in the winter, because it's pretty cold down here, and there are sort of boxes of, uh, like crates, um, with food in, um, there are also jars of sort of salted foods and things like that preserves um it's quite a big area down here because it basically covers the whole underground of the you know the same surface area as upstairs um and you'd have to walk around the barrels and stuff if you wanted to have any kind of a proper look down here um is things. it obvious where the doors to the outside are uh, yes, you can see those. There's actually a, a small crack of light 
coming through because it's still very slightly light outside so you can see sort of a line i think i'll walk over and sort of give them a push from the inside and just have a look at them so check security okay um as you are heading over towards them you're not aware but the front door opens and duncan comes inside Um, and, uh, he's looking a little flustered and, um, he says to Melvin and Dane, oh, uh, you guys are downstairs, aren't you? Is that right? Yeah. Like in, yeah. Um, he says, oh, uh, hello. Um, uh, do you, do you, do you need a drink? So for Johnny, do we know, and does Dane and Melvin know that? Jemima and Esther are in the basement or not because they kind of snuck off right I don't know I don't think you do <laughs> we said we were sneaking off into the house you know we snuck off into his house you don't know where we are exactly right okay because we I did say we're gonna go have a look and then wander through behind the bar to the kitchen so you would have seen us do that so I think because to my mind being in the back is less bad than being in the basement I'm not gonna make much of an effort to kind of to stall him or anything so um, <laughs> it's gonna be a um yeah i think he, he says to duncan no i think we're fine thank you um how, how how was the funeral oh it's um it's still going on i'm i'm going back in a second i just uh i forgot my bible so he sort of heads off towards the back um and s- stops and just grabs the, the bottle of whiskey on his way past the bar and uh, pours himself a little drink and drinks that, and puts it down. Um, I think at this, I think at this point, actually, Esther will have checked the doors and will be fairly confident that they are locked. Is that? <laughs> uh, they are locked. Yes. Yeah. Um, because she she pretty much just wanted to check the perimeter, and so she's just turning around and going, "Well, that seems all in order. I mean, that they, they seem very sturdy." Shall we go back up? And I think I'll just start walking back up. You then hear a a creaking above you. (laughs) Um, Um, Which obviously you don't know is is Duncan walking across the... The the trap door from behind us, does it like close? Would we have left it open? Because I wouldn't have closed it behind me if it didn't automatically close or had to be closed to get in then you would have left it open. However, it is that there's like a central thing in the kitchen sort Mm -hmm. of like a preparation area um and it's on the opposite side of that to the door to the living quarters yeah yeah um so he wouldn't necessarily see it as he passed yeah if jemima hears someone walking around like on the floor i think she was probably poking around the barrels a bit curious she probably just looks up and doesn't really react (laughs) By the way, I was going to look around and see if there's anything strange in the cellar otherwise, but I don't have to do a spot hidden if it's irrelevant. Um, I'll let you do one in a minute. So Duncan um, sort of reappears at the kitchen door. So you guys see him and he's holding his Bible and he goes, you wouldn't believe it, but uh, they don't have enough in the church for the whole village. And I live closest. Um he then sort of looks over his shoulder and sees that the trap door is open um, and goes, and, and at this that's point, dangerous. I, I should have, uh, shouldn't have left that open. And he, he pushes it closed um, and goes, right. I'll, uh, I think I'll be back in about half an hour and then I'll get on preparing your evening meal. And um, we can have a nice chat about the day. Okay, I'll see you soon. And he heads out. I imagine Esther was halfway up the stairs and heard him say that and went, oh, and paused. Yeah. <laughs> was just like, well, he like shut the shut the trap door. So, like, mm, okay. Um, the, the closing of that actually kind of blows out the, the gas lantern that's down oh, there. I'm so glad. you are left in the dark. Esther's, would you still have the light lit or would it be utterly dark? Because if the gas light was lit, you might not have had your little pocket light lit anymore, right? Um, yeah, sure. I probably would have turned it off to save battery. Yeah, okay. So Jemima like audibly like 
makes a makes a shocked noise when it all goes dark, <laughs> and then oh, frantically right. reaches for a match. So Dane is kind of conscious that Duncan didn't bump into you guys in the back, and has now closed the trap door. So I think I think he would move pretty quickly over to the. I think because Seth is on the stairs and she's heard that he's left, she'll probably just walk up and just like try and open it. Yep, um, you managed to get it open, um, and uh, as it is swinging upwards and some light is cast upon it, um, you spot on it in chalk the exact same image, image as was drawn on your doors. <laughs> And we'll leave it there. On the inside oh, of the trap door. No. On the inside no. of the trap door. No. Oh. <laughs> oh no. That's great. <laughs> oh. I hate chalk now. Let's just go into the creepy <laughs> cell as a check for the security, right? Well, we needed to see it. Kinda. I mean maybe we didn't need to see it. Maybe we could just run far away off into the hills, I guess. <laughs> Does anybody need to see it? Uh-huh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope you all enjoyed that. I did. Um, we were wondering if you were going to lead us down a hole like trapped in the cellar with the horrible things there. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, um, I yes, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, please put them in the chat and Matt can put them on screen and we can answer or discuss them as appropriate. Um, and please join us on our Discord and our social medias and our YouTube and uh, Patreon. The character creation video for this actually has gone on Patreon um, on our £5 plus tier, I believe. I saw Matt had posted. So um, if you want to get involved in things like that, um, that would be great. We had fun creating characters. Um, only for me to drive them slowly insane. <laughs> or in Melvin's case, quickly insane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the twist is a sign that says entering Loch Ness that we all missed. <laughs> Does that, that mean literally... Very own Jack's comment, I believe. <laughs> Do you mean literally entering Loch Ness? Or... I mean, would... <laughs> if you don't, I mean, actually entering a lake, missing that would be a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> worrying if our feet are suddenly wet we're not what's going on here but uh, oh i'm submerged how did this yeah. happen <laughs> uncle kathy is going to become the ramsey bolton of this series everyone just howling for his demise <laughs> oh <laughs> maybe he's misunderstood i was struggling to keep it together for that call after a minute no <laughs> it's horrible i was because i was watching everybody else <laughs> <laughs> yes, bot boss battle music for each Melvin phone call, please. Oh, the time you finally stand up to him, we'll have a. Oh, that's going to be uh, satisfying if we ever get uh, to that point. Now I just want him to like live through this like horrible ordeal, so we can come back to his like uncle and be like, "I've seen some, I've seen some <laughs> stuff, and what you have to say now means nothing to me." <laughs> uh. <laughs> He's got another head in his hands. It's Melvin's. <laughs> yeah. Poor Melvin. Decapitated and he doesn't even know it. That was such a good moment with the two heads accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then four faces later as well. It's been a real uh, a real body there were, horror second. Uh, there were a lot, of, uh, a lot of people with extra faces jokes and that, obviously, mm. with uh, Willie as well. Mm. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. You're all yeah. pretending to be from the UK. Good job on the accents. We all are from the UK. No, no, no. We're all, from, we're all South African. <laughs> Which is well, really thanks. good at it. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm a, actually a reptile in a skin suit, so I worked really hard on this accent. <laughs> That's good. Well done. <laughs> um, and there's another one. There's one I did, but um, I'll, I'll, I'd rather talk to you directly about it, Sam. Um, I really enjoyed the fact that there was a bit where you found out that the the like old kind of patriarch of the village had died, and um, I believe the NPC said something like, "Oh, he's like a he's got a lot of grandchildren," and Jemima said something like, "Oh, well, that's a comfort." <laughs> <laughs> that is a comfort. It's like, oh, it's, it's, it's it's all right. Um, it's you, you know. know I 
as like long as old... there's grieving children. As lo- <laughs> then... Like a lonely old man dies is much worse in the logic of this than having a family man who's got like you know people who pass on from sure. him. In the wider scheme on. of things, sure. That was Every... Jemima's thinking. <laughs> you are all obviously French, but good try. <laughs> uh, I assure you, if if we were all uh, trying to be French, then we would be horribly offensive. Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt. I'm, I'm glad that Johnny's not trying those accents. Yeah, I'm not no. entirely sure I can try and do French. In I think when I try and do French when I'm GMing, um, it always comes across like I don't do it, but that I should be going oh ho oh, oh, after every line. No, so. no, God, no, it's not in. It's it's not good. It's not good. I think that literally no French person actually does. Mm. Not in public. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, uh, that's everything there. That's everything from chat. Cool. That was fun. Uh, I was so prepared for the end of session, the big reveal, and for like him to lock us all in the cellar subtly and just pe- close the padlock, and then just something creeping in the darkness. I thought it was going to like go full on at the end there, and that was going to be our final point. Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh, that's fine. I'm happy with this. I was ready to like lose Jemima, wake up in like some terrifying <laughs> place after having been dragged away. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, <laughs> there's still time uh. right cool um thanks everybody hope you've enjoyed this uh please do watch our other shows that's vampire the masquerade fifth edition on a tuesday simba room on a wednesday and um monthly one shots on the first saturday of every month which are different gms different players different systems um this coming saturday the 3rd of april is mark bog and please join us on social media and discord and we will see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.